Welcome to another video, my fluff chucking chums. Uh, we're up at chatting today. Uh, the forecast is pretty good. It looks very still at the moment, as you can see, but uh, it is forecast to become a little bit more breezy later, which is exactly what we want. I did originally plan to um, base this video around catching tigers and browns, targeting them. And I did come up uh, the week prior to practice and actually did manage to catch the tigers and browns. Um, unfortunately, I'll give you a heads up on this video. I didn't manage to catch tigers and browns, so I, I will show you a photograph of the uh, fish I caught last week. Both fish were caught on black snakes, fish deep and slow, which is normally a very good tactic if you want to pick yourself up some browns or tigers if the lake has them stocked there. So, there's been a lot of rainfall in Northumberland. Um, the banks are very muddy and the water is quite dirty as well, uh, pretty much chocolatey. Uh, you can't see it on the, the video there unfortunately so what i'm going to do i'm setting up on an intermediate line here uh, which is a fast glass 1.5 inches per second and i'm going to start off with two olive patterns but i'm going to space them quite close together uh, there's only four foot between point and dropper reason being the water's colored you should be using a dark pattern and keep them quite close together give the fish more chance to see the flies to begin with, I'm going to start with an olive apse on the dropper and an olive snake on the point. None of the flies are weighted. I want them to come back through the water on a horizontal plane with the line. Uh, basically, I don't want a heavier weighted fly that's going to be fishing deeper than the line actually is. I need everything to come back on the same level. There wasn't many fish showing on the top uh, when I arrived and that pretty much stayed consistent through most of the day. The fish tend to be feeding around about uh, between two, two and six feet, which is the norm for chatting. Um, you very rarely find that they stick to one level. And as you will see throughout the day, I had to chop and change depths to stay in touch with the fish. Just looking at the footage here, it, it's not difficult to see why so many anglers enjoy coming to chatting. It, it's not just that it has fantastic fishing, which it does, but the scenery is, it's just breathtaking. It's a beautiful place to be, it's peaceful, and it's what every, every angler wants really. Um, can't really fault the place, and it definitely is one of my top venues. I wanted to target the bay on my right there. You can just see it in the distance. This bay is pretty good for browns and tigers. They tend to hang around here, they like it. It's not too deep. I think it's around about 10, 12 foot in, in the middle, so I've been told. So what my plan is, I'm gonna fan cast. I'm going to start off at my far right along the reeds there, along the ledge, and then fan cast right across to my left, try and cover as much water as possible. When I first begin with the intermediate, I always cast and then retrieve immediately using slow pulls, figure of eight, etc. Ch chop and change the retrieve, and then basically start counting the, the cast down um, in increments of a foot to try and locate which depth the fish are feeding at. It was just after 8 a.m. in the morning, so I do apologize for the low light conditions. Um, the cameras don't seem to like these um, early morning starts. They prefer a little bit of sun. I did cover this whole bay, uh, fan casting, as I said, from right to left, covering all the water. I did try different depths down to around five foot. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any takers in this bay at all, which is unusual. It's um, when I did come up and practice the week prior, I did pick the uh, brown and the tiger up fairly early on in the morning in, in this actual bay. So if you do go visit Chatton and you are after browns or tigers, this bay is definitely worth a, a little crack before you, you move on and try elsewhere. Point. I've put a uh, little black dial back on the dropper but I haven't touched it yet. So I moved just outside of the bay, a little further back towards the lodge. And as you can see, I managed to get my first fish of the morning. I was communicating with uh, the angler across, which is uh, a very, very good angler actually. Um, Matty Devine, who fishes up there quite a lot. And it is always good to communicate. So basically, we were both getting fish and uh, shouting across the lake and letting each other know which flies they were taking and whether they were on the point of the dropper which also donates the depth that they're at based on how far we are letting the intermediate line go down. Ah, 
slow the day. I'm slow the day. Just took the uh, to the dropper. So the methods seem to be working with the intermediate. Uh, fish started coming to the net. I was using black patterns. Uh, I'd switched to a black snake on the point and a black dial back on the dropper, which I then changed to a black pulling buzzer just to add a little bit of movement to that point fly. It did seem to work and fish were picking out both patterns. At this point in the morning, the fish were surprisingly high. Uh, there was a lovely, lovely ripple come on, as you can see. Uh, unfortunately, coming from my right, which isn't ideal, but it was was bearable. Um, so I wasn't counting down with the intermediate. I was just casting and then uh, retrieving and losing fish, as you can see. Over that ledge again. Same place every time. I decided to change methods. Uh, the pulling method with the intermediate wasn't producing fish as, as uh, efficiently as I would have liked. So I changed over to the, the bung with the static blob um, and fished over my little favourite spot just over the ledge. Basically there's a drop off um, around about I think to something like seven, eight foot from the edge here. There's a drop off, pretty much a rod length. Uh, just dropping it over the ledge and fish picked it up straight away. Sticking to the same method with the indicator, I started to cast a little bit further away from the ledge as it takes dried up there. I changed to a brown bin and dropped my depth to six feet as the fish were pretty much moving around up and down in the layers quite a lot. There was no set depth, it made it quite difficult to locate them. It was just a case of uh, trial and error. This was one of the better fish of the day, around about six, seven pounds I estimated on the day. Um, I would say closer to six to be honest. The camera never makes the fish look the size they are, especially with the, the lens. Uh, so I promise I'm not telling porky pies, it, it was a good fish around about six pounds. When you're fishing the, the Brandon worms, uh, or the apps, whatever you want to call them, basically the, the red blood worms, uh, it's always good to give them a little tweak, like I'm doing now. Even if you're fishing with the bung, um, I do like to impart a little bit of movement into them. It often induces a take. And if you're fishing them long line, uh, which is basically, you can fish them on a floating line with a long leader, or something around about 16 feet, uh, and drift them. The breeze that you see at the moment, the, that nice ripple is perfect for it basically just cast them out let them drift around a uh, slow figure of eight a couple of tweaks you normally get some quite positive takes it's a really good pattern uh, it's been well proven the apps brand and worm is one of the best still water patterns around at the moment Just give you a little look at how muddy the bank side actually was. Um, been a lot of anglers on the bank, obviously with the rainfall it didn't help, it was super muddy. I think it'll probably take me about a month to get the mud out of my reels. Mud aside, the fishing was again fantastic here. Um, you had to work 
you have to find the depth, um, find out where the fish were feeding, uh, adjust, change change everything to suit. It wasn't a case of sticking to one depth all day, the, the fish really were indecisive, they were up and down in the layers. But as I say again, there's no better place to be, a beautiful day, uh, fish were in a, in a fighting mood, they were interested in looking at the flies, you can't really ask for more than that. Once I'd found what the fish wanted, it was uh, it was quite easy actually. Um, I was hitting fish almost every other cast. The conditions were pretty good, apart from that sun, a little bit bright, but it's pushing the fish down a little bit, but they were still sitting at around about four to six feet. I would say that was probably the most consistent level. Um, more, more so four foot, I would say. The fish were definitely cruising around at that depth. So the setup um, for the indicator, I was fishing my usual 10 foot leader. I was using a different fluorocarbon today. Uh, opted for the sight free, uh, which is the airflow. I uh, quite like it. It's quite a fine line, and it has. I think I would go as far to say some days it does make a difference. Um, fishing the six pound, uh, which is more than enough un under the indicator for me. Uh, I do play the fish quite hard, but I, I haven't really had any problems with breakages with sight free. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good fluorocarbon. I would highly recommend it. Fish started to come thick and fast. I had raised um, the fly up to four feet, and they seemed to be taking it quite confidently. Uh, basically, almost every cast I was getting a take or actually hooking into a fish. Did miss quite a few, but that was basically down to my bad angling on the day and being too keen to set the hook. An important thing to consider here is if you look at the the water there, uh, it's a, it's a lovely ripple. It's probably perfect actually for for the bung. If you're fishing the apps or any fly with movement, a shimmy, chamois, anything like that, anything with legs, this type of condition is absolutely perfect for it. It's something worth taking note on. The indicator method or fishing the bung, it's quite a con controversial uh, technique. It's one of those marmite things. Some people love it, some hate it. But I have to say from experience, and I have fished 30 years, that some days it's absolutely deadly and it can catch a fish when no other method will. You can chop and change. You could choose to not fish a bung and just fish a long line and grease up the end of the fly line. But I find that takes are a hard spot that way. Um, but it is, it is personal choice. I never judge anybody for using any method. If it catches your fish, excellent. Uh, I'm happy for anybody who can go out, catch fish and enjoy themselves. Or even just go out and fish, not catch and still enjoy themselves. It's what fishing is all about. We need to go out and enjoy what we do. This fish turned out to be a lovely little blue. Nice fight, uh, very acrobatic. Wasn't my brown on my tiger, but that wasn't a beat of the unfortunately, but I'll settle for rainbow and blues. And blue trout. Lovely fish that. Covered in shit, I might as well just jump in. By now it was late afternoon, I decided to go back onto the fast glass with the black 
snake on the point and the black pollen buzzer on the, the dropper. Same retrieves, um, start off with a figure of eight as you can see there, quite a fast figure of eight and then a slow strip, just changing it up as I mentioned earlier. I was fishing the top layers as the fish I'd been taking on the bung were sort of between two and four foot. It always pays when you're retrieving, uh, especially with the, the lures, just to chop and change it up a bit, give the fish something different to look at and try and induce a take. reason that I am uh, retrieving it quite quickly is because I do want to be in those top layers. If I was to cast the, the line across the water there and retrieve straight away but retrieve it back obviously slowly, a slow figure of eight or slow strips, the flies would eventually end up around about two three foot deep by the time I brought them back to the bank uh, whereas I want them to be fishing in that two foot, one to two foot all the way back from end of cast to lifting off. You can of course switch to a slower sinking line, um, a neutral density line uh, which would sink around about 0.5 inches per second which to be honest fishing the top layers like I was I should have really changed to that line but to be quite honest at that point in the day I, I didn't really want to change I thought I would just make do with the intermediate and just strip it back a little bit faster. The same would apply to the reverse um, I, when the fish were deeper I could have switched to a die 3 or a die 5 to get down there faster. In a competition scenario that would be the way forward um, to make sure that you're fishing efficiently and fast but it, this was a pleasure session and I was just enjoying myself. When you're fishing the lures and you do get a take try not to uh, strike too hard. I do often see anglers ripping the fish's head off basically uh, within the immediate line all you really need to do is keep the retrieve going and gently lift as you'll see me doing right now. Nine times out of ten this will result in a more positive hookup. You won't pull the fly away from the fish as it's about to take it and you won't pull it out of the fish's mouth. When the fish is played out and it's ready for the net, don't forget, uh, keep your rod nice and high, like so. Keep the rod nice and high, nice bit of tension, and just gently slide the net underneath the fish. continue to pick more fish up on the intermediate method with the snakes. The favoured retrieve tended to be the, the slow strip for me. A uh, figure of eight wasn't working so well. I did try a uh, roly-poly retrieve keeping the snake level and coming back on it at a constant pace but they didn't want that either. I'm presuming with the slow pulls I was using it was kind of a sink and draw. The fly would have been uh, lifting and dropping in the water. I think that's what the fish wanted. Most of the takes came on the paws, which is often the case. At this point, I would just like to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. It does mean a lot. Um, it's nice to know that people are actually interested in me fishing escapades. Uh, and I do believe as anglers, we should all help each other. And I hope that some of the information that I've given you in this video and the previous videos has been helpful. Um, I am quite an approachable person so if you do need anything, uh, any questions answered or anything I can help with please put it in the comments section I will get back to you. I have had some comments regarding the music on the videos. Uh, some people seem to find it annoying. Uh, I do apologise if that is the case but being a musician myself I, I do have an interest in music and I like to mix a little bit of music in with my fishing and I uh, also find it adds a little bit of atmosphere. I have taken the comments on board and on this video I have kept the music to a minimum and tried to put more information and narration into it. Let me know your thoughts guys, that's what the comments section is for. If there's anything that you would like me to try and cover or anything that you would like to say on the channel please just let me know. 
Well, this was the last fish of the day. I had a very enjoyable time. Had fish pretty much consistently all through the session, which was very nice. The most successful fly patterns were the black snake, the brandling bloodworm, a pulling buzzer, and um, various blobs. All the flies that I use are all my own. I don't fish with anybody else's, and that's not because I, I'm a snob of any way. It's just I do prefer to tie my own flies. I get satisfaction out of catching from patterns that I've tied myself. The successful methods were the intermediate, the fast glass, sinking at 1.5 inches per second. I was fishing that between two and four feet. And the other method was the bung, fished at four to six feet depth, which was pretty successful. Most of the fish came to the static method. I would say probably about 40% of the fish came to the intermediate with the lures. The best fly pattern on the day was the red Brandlin bloodworm. Um, very consistent pattern and I would be more than happy to go out and fish a session with just a box of those. I think I'd be quite confident that I would catch fish. Well, once again my fluff chuck and chums. Thank you very much for watching the video and if you subscribe to the channel that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. I do hope that the video has given you something to take away to put into practice at the bank side when you're on one of your fishing sessions and all that remains is for me to say I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. If I don't uh, put another video up this year uh, we will be doing some great stuff next year. But Thank you very much. I really appreciate your support and tight lines.